I see lavender starting to bloom. Nothing quite like getting outside in nature first thing in the morning. The early sunlight, if you're where the sun's shining, but at least just that fresh smell of mother nature first thing in the morning. Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. It may be February, but here in Northern California, it's sunny and warm. So come join me as we take a look at my fruit orchard and what I'm gonna do to help it survive the heat that's coming this summer, namely those wood chips I scored back uh, a couple of videos ago when we were pruning my trees. Uh, they're gonna come in handy today as I mulch my fruit orchard. But first, Let's enjoy those pretty white and pink blossoms that are coming out even now. And here are the beautiful nectarine blossoms. I have my two nectarine trees in the middle of my olive orchard, but because of that, they're in a cage. Let me turn around here and you can see why they're in a cage. There's one of the culprits right there, Toffee. Toffee. Why do I have to have this cage around the nectarine trees? Don't just stand there eating your olive leaves looking all innocent. Admit it. Toffee and Coco would definitely devour the nectarine trees if they had access to them. So yeah, they do very well inside their cage. The uh, sprinkler system that I have in place for the olive orchard waters the nectarines too and boy aren't they glorious right now in mid-february i do have a rope holding up a couple of the branches from drooping over the side now that it's gotten so much longer though i may be able to release the rope it's very loose so it's not hurting the limbs but yeah before they were hanging right over the edge and of course those two were taking advantage of that I'm really looking forward to the nectarines off of these trees. And here's the other nectarine tree, about eight to 10 feet away from the first. A paler pink blossom, but just as pretty. You look so innocent, but we know what you and Coco would do to these trees if you had the chance. The only reason all the trees survive is because they're so massive. The little bit of bark that the sheep eat doesn't hurt them. You know, on days like this, all I want to do is be outside. But I can stay outside and get busy. And that's what I need to do now. I need to get to work. Lots to do here. Right, guys? Lots to do. I see some mowing that needs doing, too, right behind you. Well, always something. That's good. The trees are starting to blossom. First up are the plums and pluots with all those pretty white blossoms you see. This is a Santa Rosa plum. Here's one of my pluots. Another more bush-like pluot. Pluots are probably my favorite fruit. I don't know, I say that about a lot of fruits. Depends what I'm eating. Here's one that's already leafing out. And over here is a pluary, or pluary, combination of a plum and a cherry. Even my peach trees are just starting to open their pretty pink blossoms. They'll come into full bloom in another week or two. It really depends on the weather. 
All I can hope is that this really warm weather we've been getting in the 70s and even 80s Fahrenheit is not going to suddenly reverse itself. I mean, I know it will somewhat, but hopefully not too badly. <laughs> Time to get to work using these great wood chips for mulch. I love my sunny yellow wheelbarrow. It has two wheels at front, keeps it very steady. That one wheel in the center kind of wheelbarrow always tips over on me. So, yeah, these are great wood chips because they have chipped up the whole tree. So there's a lot of leaf matter in there too. And it's quite a variety of trees. So a lot of different nutrients for the soil in my fruit orchard. And while other people mulch their trees perhaps for protection from the cold, um, I'm actually using it for protection from the heat. And uh, the main reason most people use mulch to retain the water moisture around the plant, or in this case, the fruit trees. It's just an added benefit that this is live material. It is full of all kinds of live organisms that are going to build the soil. So in addition to a good sturdy wheelbarrow, a nice heavy duty pitchfork is essential for moving wood chips. In my opinion, I've tried it with shovels of various kinds and with forks of various kinds. And my favorite is this 10 tine pitchfork. It works great. Um, it's lightweight um, compared to a shovel and it just really does the job well. So yeah, I highly recommend a pitchfork for moving wood chips. So look, I've only taken a few pitchforks full. And I'm not sure if you can see it in this bright, bright sunlight we have today. But underneath where I took those wood chips, it's already beginning to decompose. A lot of moisture in there. I've even spotted a worm or two already. So wood chips decompose back to earth very quickly. But the kind of soil they build is the richest kind you can get. Of course, that shouldn't be surprising because Mother Nature does know best, doesn't she? So here is one of my trees. It has a circle around it defined by rocks and now filling it in is about a good six inches worth of wood chips. Notice I have hardware cloth encircling the trunk. That's for two reasons. One, it's protecting the trunk from rodents nibbling on it, munching away and damaging the tree. And also gives the base of the trunk where the graft and then the roots are at the surface of the soil, some space because we don't want to put a ton of mulch right there on top of those roots and the base of the trunk because it could encourage root rot. These wood chips are going to make this pear tree so happy. And here's one of my apple trees. And look, it too is happy with a ton of wood chip mulch in it now. Notice it has a wooden raised square around it. That's because these trees down here, my six apple trees, they, uh, are in the lower section of my property. My property slopes from west to east. And so some of these trees here, I noticed the very first winter, um, if I had a really wet winter, which I did that first winter, they kind of got uh, a lot of water around them just sitting for days. I didn't like that idea. So what I actually did that first winter was dig up those trees that had that problem and put them sort of on a mound and also added these boxes around them so I could put some extra soil and mulch around them and it wouldn't, you know, just erode away. And that has worked great. All of the four trees I believe I moved, yeah, there's four boxes down here. They all uh, did fine. That was four years ago and they all fruited wonderfully last year. I did get all semi-dwarf trees. I think I have one or two actual dwarf ones. And that's why my trees are shorter, by the way. Which I love because it makes the fruit so much more accessible. And now these wood chips are going to do their job this summer when I have 110 to 115 degree Fahrenheit heat of helping the soil to maintain its moisture levels. And the roots won't dry out with this thick blanket of wood chips. 
My Liberty apple tree, probably my most productive last year, is going to be super happy with this mulch as it breaks down and really enriches the soil. All those nutrients are going to help it continue to be very productive. My black Arkansas apple, also happy with mulch. I got to all my apples and I reached about oh, another 15 trees, I'd say, with my mulch. And look, I still have a ton of wood chips over there for the rest of my fruit trees. So very happy with my progress so far. Only took me uh, one day to do all those trees, which was about 22, 23 trees. So it's going to take me another couple of days to do the rest of my fruit trees and nut trees, but it's actually very enjoyable. And when you do something that has such clear results so quickly, and then you know it's going to have great results in the future, well, hey, that's a good thing. So thanks for joining me today for this quick but hopefully pleasurable little trip around my fruit orchard. And I encourage you, if you have any chance whatsoever, score you some wood chips because they make the best soil after they've broken down in a wonderful mulch for your trees and your other plants too. Even a flower garden benefits from a mulch of wood chips. Remember, you can create the life you want so why not start right now? Right guys? Why not start right now? You're busy creating the life you want, aren't you? The life you want is eating every single green thing you can get your tongues on. <laughs> well, you're not going to get your tongues on these or your teeth or any part of your mouth. <laughs>